starting the recording 828 Sunday after a pretty ugly Friday if you were a bull if you were a bear you made bank um, so I will have a separate video later tonight after the futures open uh, describing what happened and why it is normal but in an abnormal way in other words the way Friday unfolded was ugly and not usual but the price action from the bottom to the top to the drop so far is normal however painful it is because the rally was too big basically the drop as normal as it is relative to the rally is abnormal to our feelings because the way it, it, the markets fell apart on Friday is like something broke and it and it they overdid it so maybe somebody had margin calls I mean as silly as there was a an IPO Jay-Z whatever it does went up to hundred and eighty dollars and ended up 18 so maybe somebody got called on some margins there 10 times so I have no idea I'm just speculating anyway the levels are not unreasonable but the way they got uh, they were unfolded are so let's just tackle one company at a time I'm going to try to do a couple of videos if I have time about big companies and address what I would do and maybe that would give people ideas as to what there is to do and what there isn't to do there will be a sheet in the video description that has a list of all the tickers in this video I'm gonna break it up into three different videos and I have specific answers for example if I'm long a stock and I say okay I'm still long that stock but I didn't add to my long in other words a 4% drop is not reason to add more to my risk because I don't know anything new now that I didn't know on Thursday so if that's the case I shouldn't add some stocks I would engage but I, I, I would start not all in and I wouldn't add anyway I will point them out once we get to them and they'll serve as examples Palantir is one of them okay so this is uh, Alcoa doing relatively well down two percent on a hideous day is not unusual it is going into a resistance zone so 62 area there should be sellers there this was our target from before and they delivered so it's okay for them to fall down to here and bounce this green one was this target and that delivered as well um, I kept it there for visual reference that we saw this possibility we saw this possibility so if we dip to 52 and a half it shouldn't be crazy it would be an opportunity to enter Apple it's not even close to being where I would buy it and that's the same statement I think on Amazon and all of those um, I put these new to show that maybe maybe it's not confirmed we are in a descending channel that's an important statement for the whole market listen to that part and apply it to all the stocks and the indices uh, the fact that Apple lost 166 it targets 157 roughly inside of a descending channel so it may not go straight there but if it bounces expect a sell-off and a lower low and if it bounces expect the sell-off and a lower low I am saying expect it doesn't mean it I want you to short it I want you to take advantage of the rallies to fix the problems so if you bought Apple on Friday and then you lost money and then it bounces on Monday and gives you back most of your money and if it was short-term trade I would use that bounce to exit so are they selling rallies is the question that's why I put this there I'll repeat this is important and applies to the whole market I want to assume that this triggers this target down here and that's the same for the SPY trust me I'll show you numbers later so I want to again assume that we're now in a descending channel for the next week so rallies should not be chased they should be used to exit problem trades so this is not an obvious entry point for Apple um, not even a place where I would start longs you know what I did with Apple I shorted it up here and I went long with a credit put spread so now I have an iron condor for which I collected a lot of money and I can sit tight with it uh, I will be safe I think with it I don't know what that is apps I think uh, that's a typo maybe it's this one that they wanted we'll assume that is the case um, okay 
So it is falling into a support zone. It's giving up almost half of its uh, rally. So it should find buyers into 19. It has support into 19. So if I'm long this company um, and I haven't closed my longs, I would not panic out of them because the easy pain is done and it has a buying opportunity here for a uh, you know dip, rally, dip, rally, maybe. So not a place to panic out. AbV <coughs> also falling into support, although it did lose some important support last week. Um, I would take longs into that. So as it approaches 135, as a trader, I would be uh, okay taking longs with a tight stop. That's an important statement. So if I lose this, I don't want to find out how low it can go. So I would exit. From an investment perspective, I would have to zoom out a little bit. I definitely would exit. <laughs> um, if you lose this one, it could go to 120. It could, if the market's correct and all of that. On its own, maybe it doesn't, but it could. So avoid it. <clears throat> avoid the trip down there. Adobe, wow, why so choppy? Um, it wasn't an, an obvious entry point. That's not Adobe, that's AD. What's the, I'm like dyslexic today. Most likely they're asking for Adobe and I put ABDE. Actually, I didn't, I copied and pasted from them. Maybe they mistyped it, hopefully they want this one. Anyway, um, almost same as AbV. It should have support immediately. It's not going to be a hard floor and if the market falls, it will fall. Um, closer to 360, I would be interested in it. So I don't trade Adobe often, but I'm going to put an alert for myself to maybe sell a put spread a little bit lower. So if this week gets uglier, and here's how I'm approaching this week. It's going to be opportunistic. I'm, I'm looking to remember my statement from two weeks ago when the market was going, le going to the moon. I'm looking to buy the dips, but I haven't seen dips worthy enough in general, except for spotty entrances. And now we're approaching that level. So um, I believe I shared a credit put spread to somebody at some point, so I would do it. Has support. If you lose this one, you can exit from a trade perspective because it probably is going to go to 290. It's not a forecast, just a warning. Rallies will face sellers. ADI, arguably you triggered a bearish pattern here that could target 152, be careful. You do have support, but you can easily fall another $5 given the right conditions. Anywhere in here, I would be interested in it uh, if I was looking to get long in this cluster right there. A firm, I'm looking to catch the falling knife and it was, boy, it was a machete. They reported earnings, I can't remember the particulars, but we can readdress it. So it did what we thought it was going to do on the way up and then some, and now they're giving back some of it, half of it, roughly. Uh, I'm eyeballing a little bit more than half. So it is catchable. All this is support. Um, I would be interested in an investment for the long term. It's a good company business. The, the business model is good. AIG falling back into support. This rally was crazy stupid. Ooh, he used the S word. Um, gap down here, not necessarily important to fill all of it, but it just gives you a visual target for somebody who's shorting it. So maybe they say, I'll short it into 52. Uh, so has a lot of support. If it gets into the gap, then it's viable. For here, okay, I guess so. But not for me. Um, Align technology, that's the the dent, the the tooth fixing things where you, anyway, you know what that is. You do not want to lose this because then you open questions of 216, 220. He, giant head and shoulders. Until then, this is support. This is volume support. This is uh, level support with support below it, three of them. So if I didn't close my longs on Friday, I would wait a few days to see how these are going to f perform. However, I risk if it loses this one, it targets down here. So I will use rallies to get out of trouble. So this is uh, for Rez from Australia. Um, great breakout. I believe we need to go to a daily, if not weekly, to see that. Uh, 
Um, all right, so this is not an obvious entry point. If I was long, I would have exited my longs. This is an incredible pop, overdid my estimate, passed through some pretty important resistance like they weren't there and finally failed at this level. This is probably the important candle on a daily basis. I can't believe I haven't seen it. So 38.8, let's round it to 39. Um, I would exit my longs. If it was a somewhat shorter term, even like six months straight, I would exit. So AMD, I don't want to be long AMD or Nvidia. And I've mentioned why. Great companies, great management, great products, great pr reputation. As long as, for example, I'll use NVIDIA. As long as NVIDIA is under 200 on the long, longer time frame, it's in the hands of the bears. And they have special circumstances, um, the semis. with the uh, They're correlated with uh, supply headlines. So Now, this is risk for Monday, Tuesday. So it could be at 84 by the end of the week, maybe by Thursday, if they don't hold the bounces. So they have support exactly where they closed. They have support at 88. They have a gap down to 85-ish. They could target 84 and 83. They, have, they even have a gap down to 82 because the rally was unreasonable. They're always unreasonable. Now, eventually, I would be happy when they get a above 105 and hold it remember those numbers they've been around forever so the bears have had control of amd this whole time because of the chart same with nvidia on the daily basis they lost a neckline like this that makes it a tough trade so amazon i would not catch it it is still above this giant weird gap so this rally was unreasonable and they just lost support. That target is down here. I didn't draw it, but it's just like the other one, AMD. I'll show you. If I copy this guy and I go back to Amazon, I bet you I can hit paste um, and the time frame was different and just move it to here. And that would be the target for Amazon-ish. And look how well it matches up right there. So. If Amazon is below 126, I would be interested. Now, I'm a fan of the company. You know it if you've known me for a long time. I've said this is a weak spot. I didn't add this. This has been here for a while. This was the breakout zone. They overdid it. And now they're trying to build a better base. I hope they don't go up here before they go down here. They need it. They need to. They're here. Let's just take the pain and stabilize. This was the target up here from this breakout and they overdid it so this is that now it's this guy maybe i should make him a little thicker so we'll see anywhere down here would be good arc f danger will robinson so it look if i do this it's target down here so i'm not going to do that this losing this would target 16 and a half it would be an an entry point and it would fill this gap i'll put an alert um, it has support it has support below that they're selling rallies that's a question mark so if i get a rally if they take out 19 they could get the 20 exit longs or fix your problem trades uh shortable res i just saw your question on that other ticker uh alu not necessarily. I mean, you could try it, but I don't know much about it. You know better. Um, I'll leave it in your hands. That was a question about this stock right there. Um, AutoZone. So um, if if they're trying to break the economy, this is the stock to do it in. Um, I personally don't know how the hell they are in business. To, to be honest with you, I go to AutoZone and everybody in there knows 10% of what I know about cars. And I'm not a genius with cars. My son is. And I just don't know how they make money. Because the help that they have in the stores, at least the ones around me, are just insanely bad. So, from here to here, this is about half. That's normal price action. This is a daily chart. It does have support and support below that. Uh, if it gets into 2050 or lower, I'd be interested from a trading perspective. However, I don't trade AutoZone because the, the options for it trade like 
the old uh, or booking.com or the old whatever it's called Priceline it feels manipulated manipulated so I would be careful all right uh, Boeing let's go with that Boeing I thought it 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 overshot its mark so somebody said how would you trade it I said I would do a credit put spread and a credit call spread I said I would start with a credit call spread and then add a credit put spread on a dip uh, so it's still range bound behaved okay um, hit one target and went back so it is range bound so that's perfect for an iron condor and these were the notes I did for somebody and I don't remember if I shared them officially or not but that would be still my take iron condor Baba has had real momentum of late but I still wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole I don't want to deal with any China stocks because they have headlines that I cannot control and these are extra headlines why do I need extra drama when I have the drama that I have in other words if I'm worried about the S&P and all of its components why would I want to do that and worry about the Chinese headlines so now going long Baba I have to worry about everything that's going on in the US markets and the extra headlines from political statements in China which I know nothing about so personally I would not touch it at 105 or anywhere near 105 now the stock deserves to be 200 or more but I'm willing to not touch it okay so Bank of America I am not a fan of banks up here and I express that this seems easier that those were my comments and that's what's happening okay you have a cluster of support you can if I'm long Bank of America I'm not panicking now if I'm not closed my longs because this area is going to be supportive so if I can take another dollar of pain I think I'll find buyers but if the so buy the dip opportunity too. those were prior prior comments look at it buy the dip opportunity one look how it became resistance buy the dip opportunity two. that's the support that we have now buy the dip opportunity three is a place where I would definitely get long and double gap here you can fit a a stick right there and wouldn't touch anything so I would be in even I would be interested in um, support three of three long question mark I'm not a fan of banks but even I would consider it so these are older comments but I'm saying that the, the levels are still relevant uh, BBBY I hope you're not investing if you're investing you're on your own I don't like this company it is dying I'm not my opinion it's what the PNL is telling me they're going down and they have no idea how to stop this uh, toilet bowl comp uh, sales shrinking in retail that's a death sentence especially that nobody goes in unless they have a 20% coupon they tried divesting from that and they couldn't they announced they would no longer do it and then suddenly I still get them get them okay um, this was the heyday box I don't know why I did this but it's still right inside of the box so I'm gonna say you have support you have a resistance if you can break above 12 you might get the apes back in it to 17 from a trading perspective if you are trading it you need to be in the live room to help you otherwise I don't have any comments from the charts for investors this company is should be like anyway I wouldn't invest in this company but if you know something I don't go for it if you want to trade it I'll help you minute to minute um, so <laughs> Best Buy is the only gig in town and it cannot it cannot gain uh, momentum the Bears have it all the way it does have support at 72 and support at 68 so those are the two statements it does have resistance above and support below so there's nothing much to do maybe there is um, a head and shoulders that being priced out and the target of which is about 72 so I would consider longs around 71 as a trade to bounce but uh, not as an investment BHP I bet you I'm gonna say it's not for me this is not an obvious entry look how choppy this thing is it's probably a better stock to invest in as it pays 11% what what do they do exploration iron ore Wow 11% seriously iron ore it says coal and copper not oil um, you, whoa 
So this is not an obvious entry point, although it can get to 66. So you might want as well, you might as well study its dividends and its history and own the company. Let's look at its financials. Is this a 32 billion in cash from operations? So um, yeah, I would own the stock instead of options. 11%, that's insane. Sounds weird. Baidu. Same comments as Baba has momentum. Baidu has a trigger for much higher prices. So from that perspective, I could trade it, but I wouldn't invest in it. Um, if they take out 158 with confidence, they could probably get to the 70s and 80s, 176, 180. With a lot of resistance. So again, it's not for me. This is too big a rally. This is the target two of this green thing. So not for me at this point. Maybe on a, here, on a dip back to 140, I would... I could engage with it as a trade. Big lots, um, they're still in business. Wow. So this is like BBBY fundamentally. Um, actually, not so. These guys are not shrinking. Interesting. Did they buy somebody? In other words, is the growth internal or uh, organic, as they say, or did they buy their growth? Okay, so there is a channel. You can see it. They're selling rallies. Uh, you're close to a... a support into 20 20 and a half so this is the case where if i didn't exit my longs if i got long here and i didn't exit yet i, I made a mistake but at least i might have some reprieve so what what the bulls want to see is higher lows so don't go below this so you can claim okay i stopped making lower lows and i can come back and tackle this so if somebody's buying into it for a swing trade opportunity i don't blame you so your goal is to say okay somewhere here there is a buyer and I want to I want to see if I can do that. I won't go beyond here because I don't want to raise hope. That's not what I'm saying will happen. But if I get long, that's my hope. Eventually take this out, that gets me to 38. Beto. Um when when so this is Bitcoin, right? I've shared along in the twelves. If I didn't do it the first time, this would be the second time. I would do it. So here are my overall comments. So I I shared along in here. I didn't get anybody's questions about it. Nothing. Then it got to here and everybody, hey, what do you think of Beto? I kid you not. I had dozens of people come and ask me. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you the mindset. The human emotions is telling us to do exactly the opposite of what we want to do. Nobody's asking me about he Beto here except for the person that submitted. And I think it was only one person that submitted Beto. Meanwhile, up here, I had dozens of people submitting Beto. So my statement is, I'm going to take that out. It's a visual noise. Um, my statement is, okay, if I ever wanted to invest in Bitcoin, I shouldn't be picking a perfect, perfect entry point. Okay, so this is a stock that just lost some support. It could go lower. I will nibble. If I wasn't long crypto, I would nibble with 120 so 20% uh, of my total position. So if I eventually want to risk $5,000 on crypto, I would nibble 20% of that into Beto shares. I would buy shares. I wouldn't buy calls. Another way of doing it if you can sell puts instead of buying shares. Notice that I said instead of buying shares. If I'm willing to buy shares for $12.60, a 100 of them, I can instead sell one put below current price so what's the difference nothing except i don't own the shares maybe i'll own the shares and what if they what if they don't give me the shares then i make money how much however much i collected to sell the put don't do that if you don't want to own beto if beto falls to 10 you're forced to buy them at whatever put you you sold it at but you would have bought shares anyway so it's even safer to sell the put instead of buying the shares so i would nibble I would not add to my position if I have already crypto, which I do. I did not add. I just literally checked on my Beto for the first time, my crypto account for the first time in a few days. Uh, because I'm not actively trading. I told you I had a plan. So um, when Solana gets to 27, I'll reassess the crypto sphere. Is it going to 11 or is it going to double bounce? and rally back to 25 and 33 on on crypto on bitcoin 
So the answer to the question is, if I'm long, I didn't even check it if I own shares. If I have calls, I have to manage those risks. If I'm looking to add, I, I shouldn't. I don't know anything new. Um, so is it an entry point? Partial, not all in. Same exact comments on Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin. Beto is Bitcoin. So Beto is an ETF that tracks the Bitcoin futures, BTCF. So arguably, this targets uh, 18 or 17. So we could go and test that. That's why I don't add. Um, so somebody's asking, I don't understand why they sell crypto when the Fed is doing what it's doing. That's because what I said before we started this whole thing is that something broke. And when somebody has a, a margin call, they need to sell whatever assets they have. And maybe they sell 10% of their holdings and they have a program that sells 10% of everything. So they're selling risk. Uh, they're taking risk off to raise cash. So they're selling every asset class that they have. So BX, that's one explanation. I, I don't know. I'm not from Wall Street, but that's my logical explanation. So BX, uh, I took out the boxes that we had. This box used to say debit call spread. And this was there because I said it's worth a shot on the long side. And I would sell a put spread and or buy a call spread and it more than delivered. So that was this green harmonic. And that was target two, and look how close they came. So now it's falling back into halfway of that rally entry spot. So if somebody's trying to get long BX, okay, just be aware that it may have triggered a head and shoulder. So 92 is a better entry, 93. In fact, I'm going to put an alert. Um, reload for myself, okay. Citigroup, not for me. It could still fall to 48. I don't see immediate support. Uh, <laughs> definitely not for me. I am not one to chase. I know it's counterintuitive, but in my opinion, I've become much more successful when I've been okay seeing something rally without me. I mean, what is your thought here? That this is a bargain? Or are you investing? Are you trading? If you're trading and you're just chasing, that's fine. You buy high, you sell higher. But if you say, hey, you know, CF industry is doing great. I want to be part of it. I want to invest in it. What? No. What is your thought? That this is a bargain for the future? Not for me. So it may have a great year now. But if I'm an honest person with myself, I should say, Nick, you missed that one. You wait for the crash. And it will come to reload if that's how much you love it. You missed it. The easy money has been made. That doesn't mean it doesn't go higher. It means I'm okay seeing it go higher without me and I'm okay saying I missed it. So Charter is falling back into strong support. Now here's the double edge. Um, this should be a hard bounce from 420 or you know into 408. But if you lose that, I would exit because I don't know what's below here. It could be substantially lower, like 330 could be it. But it's not, I don't short it because of that. In fact, if I'm shorting it here, I'm making a mistake. This is where you get long with stops. If I haven't closed my longs, I would hold out a few days and see how this holds up. If they lose 408, I would be really concerned. Sienna, not an obvious entry point. You have a uh, catalyst above 56 and you have risk down to 48. I don't know what this guy is. Whatever it is, I don't want part of it. What the hell is this? Uh, Cerebrus, I know the word, but uh, not a lot of sales and a lot of spending. So if you're actively trading this intraday, come see me in the live room. I've got nothing for you from the chart itself. Do homework on the company. Um, that's what they asked for. I'm going with it. Um, I don't know what you mean. The Fed is back to being hawkish. When did the Fed quit being hawkish? That's in the mind of people. The Fed never for one second said they're not hawkish. I don't understand that, James. Anyway, um, the fact that you said that tells me that the expectations on Thursday 
is that the Fed is going to stop being hawkish. And they had no hints that they were going to do that. So how many are like you that they had the perception that the Fed stopped being hawkish? I don't know who, how they did that. Uh, I don't know what idiotic news agency said that the Fed is doing a U-turn on its hawkishness last week, before last week. Anyway, I don't want to debate it here because <coughs> I don't listen to news. Maybe you had that dialed in. In any case, the Fed never stopped being hawkish. So they're not back to being hawkish. They are hawkish. That's why I keep calling him an idiot. He is actively breaking the economy so he can do his half of his job and fix his, pro his mistake from last year. So I don't agree. But anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, 21 is support on this, this thing. So anything below 21 is a viable uh, opportunity. CLF. Um, that's not what I said. Anyway, this is not the right venue for it, James. I'm doing homework on individual stocks. So we can debate that tomorrow. So the, the uh, CLF is, I drew this red thing and it's probably coming to fruition. It has resistance. If it takes this out, it gets up here. If you lose this, you can probably come and retest that and see if this is a, this was correct. I'm not, I don't like the whole sector for me, but that's not typical. Do your own homework. I can tell you you have resistance and a potential catalyst above, support and a potential catalyst below. What do I do here? There's nothing to do. If I'm long, I don't add. If I'm looking to get long, I could if you want to. And set stops. Okay. Uh, Comcast. It is worth taking a long, but immediate stop. Because I don't know what the heck is below here. It could be miles. So it's unreasonable to expect miles. But I don't know what the company is anymore. I mean, they have a decent P&L, but... These days, cord, not cord, I really don't know. From a trading perspective, that's a hard bounce. I would take longs with tight stops. Or wait out a couple of ticks to see if it bounces off of that and maybe want to short it with a put. When I say short a stock, I never mean uh, go out and short a stock. Chipotle, most definitely not an obvious entry point. It is vulnerable down to 1400-ish, maybe 1395. Um, so I guess if I were to put one from here, vulnerable, I should put that in the middle. Uh, Costco, exactly the same comments. In fact, I'm going to do this copy Costco paste, and I won't claim all of this and it's not vulnerable all the way to here. Oh, okay, so it's doing this from a higher point. They overshot, but that's what they're doing. So there is support. Um, I wouldn't engage long. I think you you could get a much cheaper price in Costco. Hey, see what I did there? <laughs> cheaper price in Costco. Uh, definitely vulnerable. So you remember when I said everybody needs a little CPB in their account? Look how well it did in a tough market. But now it is vulnerable. Uh, CPB pays about 3% dividends um, and behaves really, 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 really well in tough markets. Look at it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's good stock to own always. CRM, I went long, I would go long, I wouldn't add to my longs, but it is in a spot where it is uh, fundamentally sound and uh, technically supported. Now, if you lose this value, I don't know why you would lose 154, then I would be worried. If I was to be assigned shares under 152 or 154, I would take the shares. I think my risk was down here, credit put spread, so I didn't even look at it. 14135. Uh, I did it for October so I don't have to sweat every red tick. Uh, CTRA, I don't know it very well, but it doesn't look like an obvious entry point. You do have support below 29 or at 29 or below. You do have a gap up here, but it looks like resistance. So if we get the 3350, I would be an exit point, but I don't expect it to get there. In fact, in fact, here's your box. 
actually here's your box your range bound in here you have support here you have sellers there dash i would risk longs into this support from a trading perspective from an investment perspective this is a company that grows fast and um you know i would be willing to take longs if i'm not long if i do have longs i wouldn't add um, if if i took a trade not an investment and it loses this support i would get out because i think i could buy it a lot cheaper like maybe fifteen dollars cheaper i don't want to find out what lies below here so i would stop out but it's worth a shot it could bounce to 76. all right this is the end of the first video so let me go stop that